Hey everybody, I'm Joey, and today we're making crispy oven-baked chicken thighs with a quick pan sear. They're so crispy, you might confuse it for fried chicken. So follow me, and let's turn up the tasty. So today we're making these crispy oven-baked chicken thighs, but I'm gonna show you a little twist because frankly, I've tried a lot of recipes out there that claim to create crispy chicken thighs, but guess what? They don't. Couple issues. One is this chicken thigh skin is very thick, especially compared with a wing or like a chicken breast. A lot of times when you see these done competition style at barbecue events, they go through great pains to actually thin out the skin. They'll remove it all together and put it back on. A lot of these recipes, 450 degrees in the oven and they claim they come out crispy, but I've tried and they do not. Why? Well, because on top of this thick skin, They'll wrap them up like this and they'll have the thighs touching one another. That skin right there is not gonna get crispy. Also, we've done a lot of chicken wing experiments here and we know how long you have to roast those chicken wings to get them really crispy. So why would a shorter cooking time work for thighs if it doesn't work for wings? So I have the solution. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by removing the bone. Let's face it, you can't eat this bone anyway. Look, you're either gonna have to remove the bone after you cook or before you cook. So why not do it before? A lot of people think that this is really complicated, but it's not. I've done it a lot. I'm gonna show you how I do it. First of all, over here, we have some chicken thighs that have already been deboned. Look at that. Lay out nice and flat like that. Chicken skin gets full contact on the pan. So when you flip over these chicken thighs, take a look. You're gonna have that fat connector right there on the bone. And that's where I start here. I have a fillet knife, but a boning knife will work equally well. So you just cut along that edge right there down along the side of the bone. And you come on over here and you work the other side of the bone, like so. And you just trim in. Now, before I cut it off, I just wanna show you, there's this, oh, I guess tendon. I call that the bottom. And then up here, I kind of call this the top. There's also a tendon connector, but it's much thinner. So as we work our way around that bone, here I feel like gravity is just your friend. So you're just gonna cut in the top, remove that, keep cutting in towards the bone. Okay, so now you get down to this part right here. And that's the part, it's not gonna be edible. You wanna make sure you trim that off as you cut around. You have a boneless chicken thigh, but you still wanna do a little more trimming. Why? Because look at all that extra skin right there. You don't want that on there. It's actually very thick, so it's gonna be hard to get that nice and crispy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim up excess skin, and look at that. A well-trimmed chicken thigh ready for cooking. Now, removing the bone has the added benefit of allowing these to cook not only much faster, but much more evenly. Now, you don't have to throw these bones and this skin away. It's the perfect basis for your next chicken stock. All right, so now we're ready to season these. I actually made a new rub specifically for this recipe. I actually don't know what to call it, so I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments below. Right now, let's just call it chicken rub, for lack of a better way to put it. If we pick your name, we'll send you a couple free t-shirts, find some way to recognize you on this very video. It's one part chicken bouillon, one part garlic salt, one and a half parts onion powder, one part mustard powder, one part ground black pepper. So we're gonna start here on the skinless side. Now a lot of people under season their meat. A lot of this is gonna stick to the pan as it cooks. Don't be scared, go ahead and season thoroughly. But now that I have these seasoned, right over here I have some corn meal. And you're not gonna need a lot of this. This is exactly what you'd see used with a lot of fried chicken recipes. And we're just gonna go ahead and dust that on as well. This will help promote some nice crispiness. It really gives it like a fried chicken taste. I'm amazed. Not only that, but you'll see here in a moment, we don't use any oil with this recipe too, so it's relatively healthy compared to fried chicken. A quick note, you only put the cornmeal on the skin side. Do not put it on the other side. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to use the oven for part of the cook. The other part, we're gonna use this cast iron skillet. I just wanna take a minute and thank my friends at Into the AM for sending me this awesome gear. If you wanna check it out for yourself, we've included a link in the description below. As you saw, cooking can sometimes be a little bit messy, but I think that's one of the things that makes it fun. All right, so now that we have this pan preheated, we're gonna go ahead and drop these chicken thighs in, 
skin down. And outside of this being a well-seasoned skillet, there is no additional oil that we're using. A quick note on this, you don't necessarily want this pan ripping hot because your skin can burn. I like a nice medium to medium high heat. Also another tip, you wanna go ahead and pat these down so it makes good contact with that hot pan. Now take a look at that. We didn't use any oil in the pan, but that chicken skin has so much natural fat in it, that oil is already beginning to pool. So these are gonna cook skin side down for about five minutes before we transfer them over to that oven, which is already preheated to 375 degrees. The smell is already so incredible. It smells like we're cooking fried chicken. We'll get them in there for 10 minutes. All right, guys, these have been in the oven for 10 minutes at 375 degrees. All right, that's 162, so this has a little ways to go. But now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and flip these over and let that skin dry out just a little bit. Look at that color right there. Can you see that at home? Look at that. Now we're gonna throw these back in the oven and let them crisp up for another, I'd say about three or four minutes. Now when it comes to crispiness, let's see if they make that crispy sound. One way to test for that is to take the edge of your thermometer and just rub it across the top of the skin. Let's see how they sound. Listen to that. We've done that with chicken wings before. That is crispy chicken skin. All right, so I'm gonna let these cool down for about five minutes and then we'll come back for the taste test. All right guys, these have been resting for five minutes and I seasoned them with just a little bit of green onions. We took some great pictures before I absolutely maul these things. They're one of my favorite meals. And I want you to see that at home. This is a really nice bite. You can see it's still very juicy on the inside. It's got that crispy, crunchy top right there filled with awesome flavor. Let's see how it tastes. Man. This is a big hit around my house for this very reason. You're getting some excellent flavor from that chicken rub, which we're waiting for you guys to name. You get the texture profile difference of that crispy chicken skin. And you know what? I'm a little bit of an elitist when it comes to that chicken skin. I don't want soggy chicken skin. I want that crispy, something that you can bite right through, something that has like almost like a concussive type of texture as you bite into it, and this does not disappoint. I'm gonna go back for more. You guys need to try this for yourself right at home. It's gonna change your chicken thigh game, I guarantee it. If you do give it a shot, circle back here in the comments, let us know how they turned out for you, and thank you so much for following along this food journey. I'll see you guys next time.